You may recall that scientists on board are measuring photosynthesis. During the process of photosynthesis, phytoplankton use the sunlight for energy, CO2 as their carbon source, and inorganic nutrients as fertilizer. To make these rate measurements, scientists conduct a tracer incubation study where they introduce an isotope such as 13C and measure the amount taken up over time. Well, this is just a piece of the elemental cycles in the ocean. Living in the ocean are a group of microbes called heterotrophic bacteria. They make a living decomposing organic matter. Solange Duhamel from the University of Hawaii at Manoa is interested in the cycling of carbon and phosphorus through the microbial loop. She uses the same principle as the tracer incubation study to study carbon and phosphorus. So far we talked about phytoplankton, inorganic and organic nutrients. We haven't spoken much about the heterotrophic bacteria. However, these tiny organisms are really important. After viruses, they are the most abundant form of life um, in the ocean, but also in the entire biosphere. They are not only important because of their abundance, they are important because of what they are doing in the ocean. Indeed, they are degrading organic matter, and doing so, they release inorganic nutrients that will then be available for phytoplankton to grow. So as you can see, every component of the microbial loop are linked together through fluxes of carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus. This is exactly what I will be doing on this cruise. I will look specifically at carbon and phosphorus cycling in this microbial loop. To do so, I will use radioisotopes such as C14, tritium, 32, and 33P. So why am I interested in the phosphorus cycling here? Well, phosphorus is really the backbone of life. It is present in the genetic material of all living organisms. It is present in DNA and RNA. It is also an important part of structural component of the cell. It is present in phospholipids, which constitutes the membrane of the cell. And it's also the fuel of the cell, since it is in ATP, which fulfills the energy necessary for most of the metabolic pathway of the cell. So during this cruise, it will be really exciting to see how phosphorus partitioning will change when going from a very productive area in the Chilean upwelling towards the really poor water of the oligotrophic gyre near Rapa Nui. We are currently at station six. Operations should be completed by 11 p.m. tonight. We will then transit to our final station. Stay tuned for more updates.